Hey, it's Jesus Castillo from rubyguides.com and in this video we're going to do something fun. We're going to be looking at a piece of code, specifically one method, and we're going to read it and analyze it and see exactly how it works. Hopefully this will give you some ideas on how you can read Ruby code and also how you can fix your program when it's, it's not working and learn about how different Ruby methods work together. So let's do this. Okay, so I have this method is called at commas. And what it does, the purpose of this method is to take an integer, a number like 1000, and then turn it into a string like this, which is still 1000, but it has a comma, right? So this can be helpful. This will be like a helper method kind of thing, right? Utility method, we can also call it. Um let's see how it works if I have these examples and I run them, then you can see that we get 100 because 100 doesn't have any commas, we only add 1000 commas every 1000 units, right? And for the million, it's working. So when you analyze code, it really helps if you have some method calls like this, so you can see what the output of the program is, right? So the next thing is to actually look at the method. So first I'm going to remove this or command this one because that one is not going to be very helpful for investigation. Ah, here is the method. So you can see it's a lot of methods chained together. And that, this is one way to format it. And another way is you, can, you don't need to format it like that, but I like to format it like this when you're chaining, chaining methods. So what's going on here is we take our initial input or number, in this case 1 million or 100 or whatever number you want, and that becomes n, right? It's the parameter for the method. Then we start doing transformations. We start changing it into other things so that we can achieve the goal. And the goal is to add these commas. So the first thing we do with these numbers, we convert it into a string with the 2s method, which means to a string. And that's so we can reverse the number because the integer class doesn't have a reverse method. Then we first have to convert it into a string to be able to reverse it. After that, then I call Charles, and Charles, what it does, it takes a string, and then it, break it, uh, it breaks it down into characters. So it gives you an array of the characters. Then we get each slice three, which means break this down into chunks of three characters, we then join these characters and we join them again. So this joining the, the groups of three and this joining everything with the commas. So this is the part which actually adds the commas. But notice that to get here, we have to do all of this prep, all of these preparation steps so that we get the data, the number in a in a format where we can actually add the commas. And finally, we reverse. 
Okay, so that's a quick look at this method and to analyze it more deeply, what I like to do is the following. I like to look at the output, right? So it's working, 1 million with the commas. And now we're going to be taking away one of these method calls at a time and look at the output. So right now it looks like this, but if I remove reverse, what happens is, of course, we get this. So it's one million with the zeros like this and the one at the end instead of at the starting point, right? And doing this is going to help you understand what each of these method calls is doing because it's like one step in an assembly line. This like an assembly line, like a car assembly line or any kind of assembly line has a step. Every step has a task, it has a job to do. Uh, we can see exactly what's going on if we start taking them out, right? So let's take the following out. And now we can see we have this array with the groups of three characters, three zeros in this case, and the one. Let's remove the next one. And now we have the enumerator. So the enumerator is the result of calling each slice without a block. Because normally you will have a block, and inside the block you say what you want to do with this slices with these groups of three characters. But in here we're delaying the, this work to the next method and that's why we get an enumerator object. So now if I remove this, we get all characters like this and we can do this again and we can do this again and we can do this again. And we go back, all the way back to our original input. So I think this is very interesting because if you're trying to build this method and it's not working, and it's not working, then it must be one of these steps that's broken. Maybe this one is not correct or it's not doing what you expect. Right? You don't want to assume, oh, all of these are working. Don't make that assumption. You want to check. You want to check. Assumptions are really bad in programming and in communication and in other things. So check your assumptions. And one way to do that is to do what we just did. And we can quickly remove parts of the of this assembly line. And another way to do this is to use an editor that can do something like this. Ta-da! So now we can see the same thing that we did by hand, but without having to remove or comment out any methods. We can see, in fact, we can start from the top there is our 1 million, then it becomes a string, then it becomes a reverse string, then we have the array of characters, the numerator, the groups of three, in this case one because there are no, no more numbers, then we join and we add the commas, and notice, very important, beginners often get confused with this. This is an array, an array needs commas to tell apart the different elements of the array. So this one element, at index zero, another element at index one, right? The commas here are just to tell you that these are different elements. But here we have a string. Now these commas are actual commas, display commas, commas that you see when you print this string, right? And finally, after this, we reverse again. And that's how we get there. That's how we get to our number with commas. But if you don't have this 
uh, this plugin uh, or you can get it to work or you can use it for whatever reason, that's fine. You can just do the way I show you by removing the methods or you can also comment them, comment them out if you want. And then you can find out what parts are working and not working, right? So that's it. You can also, if you have blocks, imagine in here we were using a block, you can put a P, whatever, let's say we have an N, then you can print the value. So you can make sure that this N is the value that you're expecting, right? So you want to check everything when something is not working. Find out what's working and uh, what's not working. So that's it. That's how you can read and analyze Ruby code like this in this assembly line kind of format, which I really like. And I hope you found this helpful and uh, learned something new. Please click the like button for me so I know that you like this video as so more people can benefit from this information. If you want to keep learning, watch more of my videos right now on this channel. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and visit my website rubyguides.com rubyguides.com Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next video.